Hi, Techie Joe here. I work with Ace and Knight and some of the best psychics in West Virginia to create amazing live streams and podcasts for the Psychic Coffee Shop Network. Together, we brew up great content discussing news, events, hot topics, and more, all from a psychic perspective. On the Psychic Coffee Shop, we interview amazing authors in the metaphysical realm. Coffee and Tea combines Asen with Tracy, Dottie, Natalie, or Lady Gwendolyn for the good and the bad of being a psychic. Shameless self-promotion with Dottie the Psychic talks to leading and emerging YouTubers and business owners in our community. Mountain Bears brings you the latest in LGBT news and politics. The Psychic That Plans answers the question of, well, how a psychic plans. Plus, we're live on air. We take your comments and your questions, including psychic advice questions. Check out our amazing programming, book an appointment with top psychics, and find out all the wonderful things we have to offer at PCSBnetwork.com today. Before we get started on tonight's episode, I need to issue a warning. Tonight's episode is not even remotely safe for work. If you couldn't tell with a title like Supernatural Smut, it does involve sexual themes. So if that's not your bag, maybe just skip this one. Are you there? Are you still here? All right, without further ado, let's get weird. Hmm. Welcome to the Esoteric Footnotes. Guys, I finally did it. It's been almost four years. I found someone who will talk to me about supernatural smut. Welcome to the show, Ivana Schloppycock. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're not Ivana. <laughs> I am. I am Ivana Schloppycock. And I also have another name. <laughs> <laughs> you also have a very unique voice. So most of you probably recognize the person on the other end here as Carly, the village tarot witch. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so Carly, my first question is why <laughs> do you know what the why is just the most bizarre backstory but the why is i was just looking to blow off some steam <laughs> i had been i had been <laughs> literally and figuratively no i had been joking about doing this for a while so i even had the pen name like i had I brainstormed this list um, of pen names um, with someone close to me, and we just have been like cracking up about the idea of writing terrible smut under the name Ivana Schloppycock. And it was like, because there's that, there's some really, really bad Mothman smut. And I know that I've talked about this before, but there is Mothman smut that like I opened read the first couple pages of and was like, I don't know if I can continue. Like, you know, Ooh. so bad. It was just like, oh, it was like a straight old school porn in book form with Mothman. And I have been obsessed and entranced ever since. Like, <laughs> what is this weird world? And then I found that there is just something deeply satisfying about reading terrible smut like it it's 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 like both hilarious and satisfying in a way that if you don't read monster smut you just don't get <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah i guess you certainly won't get this anywhere else you sure won't you will not except maybe in uh in japanese cartoons but you know ah, same thing that's that's true that's true yeah, so I wrote Seduced by the Swamp Creature. I was trying to avoid cryptids. And the only reason why is because I'm like, I don't know. I feel like everybody would expect me to write a cryptid smut because I make jokes all of the time about Sexy Mothman, probably because of the smut that I've read. But I, I was thinking about it and I was like, you know what would be fun to do? 
but different would be to take my own spin on the Universal movie monsters. And at the time, I wasn't at the time I wasn't sure if I was going to be promoting Ivana on my page, the Village Tarot Witch. So I was like, so I was like, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna steer clear from cryptids because everybody's gonna expect that. And then I saw the mask, the Gilman mask at Spirit Halloween, and I was like, well, I know exactly what to do. <laughs> and here we are, here we are with a, a a ranking book in humorous erotica. I think I'm in a few categories, but that's usually oh, and fantasy erotica is the other one that. The paperback does better in fantasy erotica. <laughs> Honestly, when I looked last night, I think there were three categories that you're ranked least. I think the lowest one was 277 worldwide. Yeah, it's like, you know what? It's like, it, it is amazing. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing that I've ever done, probably. And that's saying something coming from me. But it's. It's just fun. <laughs> that's the, that's the, it's fun. My normal writing is like a lot darker and a lot deeper. And so it, it's fun to have this entity that's not me and just shows up to do ridiculous things. And that's the entirety <laughs> of <laughs> Ivana Schloppycock. <laughs> so how long did it take to write this book? It took me... I want to say it took me about a month, but keep in mind that I like wrote the first three chapters and then I just didn't touch it again for a while. I don't remember what motivated me to finally finish, but I think I wrapped up a different writing project and I was like, you know what? My plate is clear. It's time. And so once I finished it, we had it written, edited, or finished, edited, and formatted probably within like two weeks. So like realistically speaking, Whoa. I could have written this all in about three weeks if I hadn't taken some time off there. That's not like, don't don't take my advice on that, okay? I am forever and always being like, you know what? I can and I will finish on this impossible <laughs> deadline. And then I crash and burn afterwards. So <laughs> that's bad writing advice from me. <laughs> Well, it's not a terribly long story, but that is still a really fast turnaround time. Yes, I write. I'm I'm a very wordy person. I I write very quickly. I read very quickly, but I also have to have a clear idea of what's happening. So I, if I'm writing, I will I'll have my outline, I'll have my bullet points of what I want to talk about next, and then sometimes I just sit there and stare at the screen for a few days because I just can't see how the scene comes together, and then it clicks, and I go, <laughs> boom, <laughs> done. <laughs> so I'm afraid to ask, for certain scenes, do you have those storyboarded <laughs> ahead of time, or do you let it just happen? There was a few that I wanted specifically because I thought about it and I was like, that would be hilarious. So uh, let's see. Their first encounter, I didn't have planned. I just knew that it was going to happen. So that scene kind of was just like, well, I don't know. What would two people do if you've just been rescued from a giant alligator by a guy with a giant monster dick, you know? Like, the natural <laughs> the natural thing, obviously. Um, but the one that I really wanted was um, <laughs> the underwater oral scene. <laughs> so I was oh, like, yeah. I was yeah. like, the bubbles. <laughs> I like when I was, when I was thinking about it and when I had decided to turn my character, Gil, the swamp creature, um, I was like, you know what the best part about a swamp creature is? It doesn't have to come up for air. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, it's a. I didn't plan for the alligator, or actually, I I didn't really plot out like ninety percent of that book. So <laughs> it kind of was just like, here's my characters, let's see what they do, <laughs> and this is <laughs> this is the end result. <laughs> I will be completely honest with that scene that you're talking about, the underwater scene. The yep. entire time I read that, in the back of my mind, I was going swamp water, swamp water, swamp water, swamp water. <laughs> oh God. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought about that, too. 
Like I had to stop myself from being like, this is disgusting. Don't do that. And then I was like, that's the whole point of this. <laughs> it's best if you don't think too hard. Don't think too hard about how and why things would work in this world. It's fake. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's fake. I think there was one other spot in there that I was like, you know what, though? Ick. And, you know, and for such a short book, there's obviously some things that go unresolved, like at the end, there's a scene and the obvious solution would have been to just call the police. They did not do that because no. that was more fun for me to write. <laughs> <laughs> and it was uh, an impetus for more shenanigans. See? So, uh, yeah. It really yeah. was. Which also made me go kind of like, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yep. That's but what... considering what we see in the news, it's also probably realistic. So, you know. Yeah. Just yeah. with the lizard man. With the lizard man. So that makes it fun. <laughs> a half lizard, half man, fish being thing. How did he get there? I don't know. <laughs> I wrote this book. I understand that. But in this world, monsters are just there. And it's going to, you know, I don't. I don't, I don't know what to make of this, but I have had several people ask me or say that they wanted some more of Gil's backstory and wanted to know if, like, how did he get there? And I was like, I, you know, they, I, it's hard to tell people who are, like, a fan of what they've read and just, like, craving more information to be like, well, I didn't really plan this. It just was, it just was fun and it just, it, it just accidentally worked. I don't know what to say. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm curious how Gil knows how to speak English. Yeah, I thought about that too. Cause in his first in his first introduction, I put something about it was he was obviously having a hard time forming words. And then I just abandoned that plot point and was like, he could talk now. <laughs> the, it would have made things way more difficult if he couldn't talk because, you know, it's a scary fish man. <laughs> <laughs> With a mouth that extends halfway with a, across his with head. With a mouth. With a mouth. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I think one of my favorite parts of the story was how completely nonchalant the bar reacted to Gil. <laughs> yeah. He he burst in the door completely naked. Naked. Just swinging in the breeze. Yeah. And everyone's just like, oh, it's fine. He's just a funny looking guy. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's fine. He's just a big green fella. Uh, yeah, and that one, I I thought I was like, it, people would react more angrily or like with more fear in real life. And I just thought that it would be fun to have this little moment of like, you're different, but we're just going to go with it. You know, just acceptance for my dog just very dramatically sighed behind me. Just acceptance <laughs> for like, you you don't fit the norm, but you're welcome here anyways, is the... That's that's kind of what I wanted, and plus I wanted to be able to revisit and introduce new characters, and I don't actually know where this world is going anymore because I was going to work my way through the movie monsters. I have a whole plot for The Invisible Man and The Mummy and a title for that one, and now I'm like, well, I, don't, I don't know what we're going to do next, but here we are, so... I'll be honest, the, and this is more of a challenge to you than anything else. I want you to write the scene where they try to figure out how to put pants on Gil. <laughs> I thought about that. <laughs> because you describe him as having a, a an alligator-like tail that mm -hmm. drags the ground. And I want yep. to see how they figure that one out. He has a huge tail. I've actually already like pictured this in my head because I've spent a lot of time thinking about this. Because Bobby the bartender was like can you just put some pants on that guy? You know, I think, I think her daddy says that at some point too. And so I was thinking about it and I was, I just, I just pictured him in a pair of like brown trousers, but then somebody just like cut a slit in the back. So his tail can poke out. So I also like, obviously he should have pants that fit him, but I just think that it would be hilarious if he was walking around in like high waters <laughs> and just like slit for a tail to come out. Um, but in uh, my publishing partner, Mallory, and I are releasing a 12 months of horror. 12 months of horror, but we're also doing a 12 months of smut uh, anthology. 
So it's just 12 stories, and the idea is that you could read one for each month of the year. It doesn't mean you can read it all in one sitting. It's not necessarily like themed or anything like that. But uh, I'm going to write a story for Gil for that anthology. So there'll be there'll be a little Ivana story in there. And I think that I might do the pants story <laughs> for <laughs> for that one. I've been I've been toying with different ideas. OK, follow up question with the same uh-huh. theme. Does Gil get dressed legs first or tail first? I think he. Oh, I. I feel like legs first. I was just thinking about if what if he did tail first, but then if his tail is in, how do you get your legs in? You know, these are the hmm. questions that you don't have to ask yourself until you're writing Monsters <laughs> Month. And then you're like, what would I do? If I had a giant tail, what would I do? I don't know. Okay, what if it's like a pair of blue jeans, but there's mm-hmm. a fly on both sides, only one doesn't have a zipper? See? So there's like that a second button back there. A second button back there to just just close her on up. He also could wear, he could go real old south and just have a pair of blue overalls. I might do oh. that. That would be really fun. He would be so cute. A little blue overalls and then a tail slit. But maybe Darla Jean was like embroid- embroidered the sides of it or something. So it like looks like intentional <laughs> and not like someone just took a pair of scissors and like rip. Something like that. That might that might have to be it because he could, Gil would be so cute in overalls and some sort of like straw hat situation, like trying to be normal, but also this like very large green man with a tail. <laughs> like, <laughs> I have to. Write I like that, that idea. I have to write that down. That's gonna happen now. <laughs> and, and it fits the the stereotype of like Louisiana Old South too, because you yes. know that's where it's set. It is set. I love Louisiana. I always have. I went to New Orleans for the first time in August. I had a great trip there. I I hadn't finished Seduced by the Swamp Creature by then. Maybe that's what motivated me to finish it. But I I I love the swamp. <laughs> just like in general. I let I loved it when I lived in Florida too. I just I like going and being surrounded by water and all of the different wildlife that's in the swamp. I just think it's beautiful in its own way. And that I love stories and books set in Louisiana or just in the South with like the heavy Spanish moss and you go outside mm. and you don't know what's going to happen to you. Are you going to get bit? Are you going to have a great time? <laughs> I don't know, but I love it. <laughs> it's beautiful, but you may die. Beautiful and deadly. That's, you know. Yeah, the the swamp is, is pretty. Way too many man eating reptiles there. Yeah, not my thing. I love. There's something about it. I feel like I feel like we're tapping into the same reason that I enjoy monster romance in some bizarre way, where it's connected and not connected at all. But like, I love seeing alligators and snakes. Like, I don't get close to them, obviously, because I'm not an idiot. But there is some sort of thrill about being so close to something that could definitely kill you. Like easily (laughs) are you the type that walks up to the edge of a cliff just to look over the side i'm not because i'm afraid of heights (laughs) okay fair enough fair enough i i might if i if i wasn't so afraid of heights that i might and it's not like i'm not one of those people that like spends all day being like oh i can't drive on that bridge or you know anything like that but i have been at like on a little ledge of you know there's the safety railing and i've just been like that's I don't like anything about this situation. I'd like to be like 10 steps back. (laughs) (laughs) So what else are you working on right now? Oh my gosh. I have, I have a lot. (laughs) I have a lot of projects going on both as me, Carly, and as Ivana. I recently put myself in idea jail because I have too many things going on and I need to wrap up some of them before I can move on. So I had planned on writing a Krampus Christmas story as Ivana, but I've backburnered that until next year because I had too many things going at once. However, 
you will still get an Ivana Christmas tale. I have ha 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 tail. I have I was gonna say <laughs> the tail. So uh Mallory and I uh through our company, Dark Village Publications, we have started a Substack, which is free to subscribe. Um, you'll get news updates, you'll get writing tips, and you will also get short stories from us on occasion. And there will be some spicier ones that you can subscribe, like do a paid subscription for, but there will be a lot of a lot of free content on there. So I am writing Gil's first Christmas <laughs> for I'm calling it uh, Christmas with the Creature as Ivana. And that'll come out in weekly installments throughout December. So think like Hallmark Christmas movie, but make it a monster. (laughs) So that is amazing in the most ridiculous way possible. It really is. It really. I bought a Santa hat to put on over my mask, my little swamp creature mask. And I am entirely thrilled about it to the point that like I looked up holiday traditions in Louisiana so that I could work those in. And then I was like, I like this so much. I'm going to do all of these in real life too. <laughs> and I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm going to have a blast all of December. Well, well, let's expand on that a little bit. What kind of traditions did you find? Oh my gosh. Okay. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. So you're going to have to forgive me, but they apparently have their own Santa tradition where they get, he has a different name. Hold on. I have it pulled up still. Nope. Yeah, I do. Pierre Noel, I think is how it's said. But I could be wrong about that because there's one of those little squiggly lines above the E and I'm like, I don't know what sound you make anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> But basically, when Santa comes to Louisiana, he trades out his sleigh for a canoe, but a, a P-Row, like the little tiny canoes. Mm-hmm. And uh, his reindeers turn into alligators and they pull Santa yes yes and they pull Santa through the swamp to deliver his presents but the alligators also have names hold on let me go back the alligators names are T-Boy Suzette Renee Nanette Pierre Alcee Celeste and Gaston (laughs) wow and if that's not like the best thing that you've ever heard it gets better because apparently there is a tradition of having bonfires on Christmas Eve and part of this tradition stems from the fact that this was a very heavily Catholic area so people would be going to midnight mass so the bonfires were meant to kind of light the bayou so people could find their way in the dark but Hmm. for santa they say that um the bonfires light his path so that he knows where to go like which way to navigate through the swamp and i just love that (laughs) i love it we'll just consider this a, a teaser for it so that'll definitely come into play i have a few other i just i thought it would be hilarious to see gil experiencing some of these Christmas traditions for the first time. And then one of the other things that I read was crawfish boils are big around Christmas time because it's crawfish season. I fucking love crawfish for the record. It's one of my favorite things to eat. I love a good crawfish boil. And then I also read that a turducken, turduckens are like big. And like, I know that that's a thing, but I also kind of just thought that that was a thing that we were all collectively joking about. It's not. And so I I just thought about how funny it would be to have Darla Jean has a her her father, his name is just Daddy in the book because uh in the South a lot of the time your dad just call gets called daddy. And that's a different thing in Kink World and you know, it's like how do we <laughs> how do we bridge this gap? I don't know. I mean it in the southern way. <laughs> not and not in the but like I I do this too. I call my well, I usually call my dad daddy o. Um but he you know, it's just like it, your dad is your daddy and not in a creepy way. But now I hit the point in Smutland that I'm like, "Oh, I need to pick a different word." <laughs> Um, well, he was even introduced to Gil as Mr. Daddy. Yep. Yep. He was introduced like that is that is his name. Like as this whatever happens in the series, probably everybody is just going to call him Daddy. And that's just like he won't have another name. He's just 
he's Darla Jean's daddy. That's who he is. But I, I just thought because like daddy's character started off kind of like I wasn't sure if he was going to be an asshole like kind of like a little drunk, a little rough around the edges. You know, Darla Jean is clearly tired of devoting all of her time to taking care of daddy. But by the end of the book, he kind of turns, you know, he, he kind of turns a page. So I thought that it would be funny and cute to have daddy preparing a turducken and which is a, a turkey, duck and chicken with the bones removed all stuffed together in some unholy abomination <laughs> right i'm sure it tastes delicious i would eat the shit out of that but i just i had such a fun time thinking about it and then just like imagining gill's reaction to being like the fuck <laughs> you know, like, what are you he's a, what, he's a what giant fish doing? man wearing overalls but he's, he's trying giant, to comprehend a turducken see? and a turducken you know that's it because like He's if he's been living in the like, if this is his first real Christmas, then that's your first introduction to Christmas light. I mean, I'm sure he's seen all that in the swamp. I don't know, but um, yeah. So there, those are going to come out in um, two weeks. Yeah, and it, yeah, those are going to start coming out, and it'll be weekly, so they're not going to be super long. Those ones are going to be free because again, these are the Hallmark Christmas movies. If you want the smut part. You have to pay, <laughs> but yeah. you can get all of the Christmas fun and the enjoyment of Darla and Jean and their what Darla Jean and Gil and their romance delivered weekly to your inbox through the month of December. Now, caveat here: by the time this episode comes out, it will be December. So Perfect. go find the Substack because you'll be able to read like the first two weeks. Mm -hmm. Dark Village Publications on Substack. So. Yeah, so that is that is my big project right now. I just finished recording audiobooks for a series that I did with Mallory and our friend Tori. And the turnaround on that one, can I just tell you, was literally two weeks. Literally two weeks. We were like, hey, you know what's a good idea? Let's write a book together. We'll separate it into segments. Each of us are going to take a tiny part each book is like a self-contained story so you could pick up any one of our books read it and not miss out on anything but if you read them all together then you get like a whole story arc right so hmm. we had this idea and because we have no chill at, at all <laughs> this is why I'm in, it's true it's true it's true this is why i'm in idea jail right now i have no chill and i think of an idea and i'm like this is brilliant and they need to do it immediately and that's what we did with the wolf books we did it all in two weeks. So you, there are some typos and things like that in those books. And that's because, again, two-week turnaround. <laughs> that's insanity. So I just recorded those audio books. So those are going to be releasing within the next week or so. I don't know. Well, by the time this comes out, hi, they're going to be out. If you like Smut, um, go listen to it. I don't know. Or read it. <laughs> that's and and you. you say these are, are wolf books. So can I surmise mm -hmm. they are werewolves? They are werewolves. Yes. They are werewolves. I don't even know how, like this started, it was supposed to be like a mafia romance and somehow they turned into werewolves and now, you know, two weeks. It is what it is. I actually really, <laughs> I really like that. I'm going to revisit those characters. Um, I, I like the character. I like the, I like the my words just stopped wording for a second I like those characters and the way that they turned out because I only had a very brief idea of of them when I started I literally had a smut scene that I had already written and I was like I can totally base the story around this and that's what I did <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so that's that's that um I have a couple other bigger writing projects as me Carly which is kind of taking up the bulk of my writing time. So, and I guess the the final thing to say is that this year, my first book, A Collection of Eyes, uh, a novel, came out. But then I split ways with my publisher that it was published under No Bad Blood, for the record. It just, uh, it, it just wasn't, it wasn't working out for reasons. So, that book is no longer available, but will be relaunched in 2024. So um, I basically 
I'm working on a lot of marketing plans is what I, mm. <laughs> I'm writing and doing marketing plans. But um, if you follow me at The Village Tarot Witch on Instagram or Dark Village Publications, which is our publishing page, then you'll pretty much always get an update. But the best way to stay updated is to subscribe to the Substack, where you will get newsletters and fun bonuses like smut. <laughs> <laughs> what a bonus. So A Collection of Eyes, that is not a, a paranormal romance book, correct? It kind of is, actually. It yeah. is? Okay. Yeah. Well, it, not not in the same way. Not in the same way. So that book, it centers around a woman. Her name is Penrose Williams, and she has been stalked for months. So when the story starts, she is in the police station looking through the observation glass with the man who tried to kill her on the other side, right? So like it, chapter one, you start off like that. You already know what's happening, so it's not a spoiler, but basically – she is stalked and kidnapped by this man, and along the way, she has an experience that leads her to be able to see ghosts, but the ghosts hmm. that she's seeing are his previous victims. So, so there is that. So it's there's that aspect of it. So there is paranormal. Um, it's a it's more of a psychological thriller with paranormal romance twists because as the story goes on she develops a relationship with the lead detective in her case so it you know it has it all it there's also smut in there you know just for <laughs> <laughs> just for <laughs> that's uh you, you had me worried i thought she was going to develop a relationship with the ghost of one of the past victims but you know okay i did we, think about we haven't that. gone that far I've read a I've read a book I've read a book where that happened where it was the the guy died and then they had a whole a whole romance and you know what I I was here for it I don't know you know that didn't that didn't happen in my book but yeah it it has it all it has it has um some scares it has some paranormal and it's got some spice so uh if that sounds up your alley Stay tuned because it will be coming out again, and this time it'll be in paperback and ebook at the same time. Mm. <laughs> How was it released before? It was only an ebook before, um, which is which is fine. A lot of people release only ebooks and they do pretty well with it. But I had a lot, a lot, a lot of people messaging me pretty regularly, being like. Hey, I really want to read your book, but I want to read it in paperback. When's that going to be mm. available? And there was just there was there was some long enough delays that I kind of decided my toxic trait is I think I can do it better. And in this case, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm really 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 grateful. I don't want to sound like I don't want to be negative at all because um, they the people that I was published with before worked with me to make sure that I got the cover that I wanted. You know, we parted on amicable terms. So like there really is no bad blood. It just was like, I was in a situation where I was like, I actually, I kind of need the paperback at this point. Mm -hmm. And I'm a more visual person. I read a lot on my Kindle, but I only read smut on my Kindle. <laughs> <laughs> Something a, you can hide the cover on. You know, yeah, it's, a, there's a clear distinction, but if I'm going to read a novel, like, a collection of eyes I want the actual book and in terms of being able to market it it's easier for me with a physical copy than just like the right the, the kindle you know so that's going to be coming out again I don't have a date yet because um I wanted to get some of these other projects out the door before I circle back around and um the other thing is that that book really meant a lot to me. It was I'm I'm really really proud of it, but I had some I had some tangled up feels about the process and, you know, the the waiting and it kind of I hit a point where I was like I don't even want to look at this book. And so I'm I'm delaying it a little bit to give myself time to fall in love with it again <laughs> so that I can be excited about promoting and not be like, "Hey, Remember when I surprise launched my book and then just stopped talking about it completely? <laughs> so, 
<laughs> you know, it's a learning curve. I'm learning as I go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although I have no idea where to go with the conversation from here on out. I feel like let's go back to Monster Smut because we've had a great time discussing this. Like we were serious. I'm a real author, blah, 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 blah. Let's talk about smut. That's what we're here for. That's what okay, we're here for. Okay. Ivana will take the stage now. <laughs> okay. Ivana, why do you think people enjoy Monster Smut so much compared to, let's just say, the mundane stuff? Oh, I actually have an answer for this. And I am so excited because I've been waiting to talk to someone about this. The reason is I saw this on a TikTok recently and somebody broke it down and they were like, the reason that people like monster smut is because there is zero way that it is real. You know that going in. So there are some books, some romance books, some smutty books that make you fall in love with the main character. And then you're like, I can never have this in real life, but it feels, Mm. it feels like a letdown because like this goes for any, any gender, any orientation, like book characters are meant to be that like unattainable, you know, it's like the same thing as like a movie star. Right. But when it's a monster, you know, from the get go, this is never going to happen and you can just enjoy it. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, maybe I've yet to find a swamp creature. I'm not, I never say never apparently, but (laughs) I'm, Oh man, I am. Are you digesting that? I'm I'm digesting that, but I'm also like, yeah, where, what do I I ask? Where do I go from here? It's like, I just brought psychology. I will be completely honest. Last Night is the first romance book that I have ever read, and it was yours. It was mine. Yeah. (laughs) And I'm just like, this is such a popular genre. It is. Yeah. How, like, what? (laughs) Why? It is popular, and people have so much fun creating these, like, features in their monsters or these characteristics that are just, like, how did you think of that and why? Like this account that I really enjoy on TikTok, I don't remember her name, um, but she just posted a video about um, dick spines, basically. I'm sorry, and what? Dick Say spines. that again? Yeah, dick spines. And I was thinking like spikies and I was like, that doesn't sound nice. Spikies. No. But now I'm thinking maybe she meant like a, a, a spinal cord spine. You know what I mean? I don't know. But it's I'm, like. Mm, <laughs> I'm not sure if that improves things. <laughs> I don't think it does. No. But the, <laughs> the level of creativity that people are having with their monster smut, just it it cracks me up. And I'm not going to lie. I will read bad smut with the worst reviews just so that I can get the thrill of reading it. Like I, there is this author that I love. Her name is Sylvia Morrow. And, um, did she do the door one? She did the pillow one. There's a, there's a book about a sentient pillow. It's called stuffed. Okay. Like okay, sentient pillow. So you can imagine what happens. She fully bangs a pillow but it's a sentient pillow it's a pillow that can talk to her okay and she's writing a sequel but she always starts her tiktoks with hi i'm sylvia morrow and i write books people hate (laughs) 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 but she there's another one and it's called unhinged and it's it's a sentient door and she actually like i i read a review and i was like shut the fuck up what are you even talking about a door a door and it was delightfully adorable ha 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 ha. adorable Um, (laughs) it's almost um, like they're writing the tagline for the book before they even have a plot idea uh, i tell you what like the the things that i have read and i i like read them and my whole entire face is just like what (laughs) (laughs) and i love it i love it that's what my kindle is full of so like at any given moment, I'll have like a real book that I'm reading, an audio book that I'm listening to, some podcasts, and just a Kindle full of the worst smut imaginable. I mean, oh, and I I love it though. I love it. And that's the thing about this type. Like there are series that have devoted followings. Orcs are really big in monster smut world right now. Orcs really? and gargoyles. Yeah. Um, aliens, obviously. Um, tentacles are a huge a huge thing in smut world. What else is there? 
I always tell you about unhinged, but my ADHD took control and I just, you know. I, I am a little curious about the gargoyle one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gargoyle smut. It's like, you know, if Dis- you remember that Disney show, Gargoyles? I was just going to ask if it might extend from that. Pretty much. Yeah. Imagine that okay. show, big beefy gargoyles, but he gets to nail the leading lady. So Look, it's Goliath. Know. I understand. See, you, you know, and that's the thing. Do you do you read these stories or like you hear these reviews and you're like, why would I want to read that? But then you read it and you're like, that was actually pretty cute. Like the unhinged one, I did not I read unhinged before I read the the pillow one, the stuffed one. So this was my first smut experience with a sentient thing. And <laughs> I I I I did the equivalent of scream laughing the entire time because I was just so thrilled with this. It's called Unhinged. It's on Kindle Unlimited. I think she has paperbacks now too. But basically, the wood that that door was made from came from a, a grove of like dryad trees. So he's like a demigod, but oh. he was in a tree. And then he got turned into a door. So he's like aware and he falls in love with the owner of his door, right? And so it has this whole thing. And then Zeus comes because, of course, it's Zeus. OK, he'll stick it in anything that moves and breathes, including a tree, apparently, which is yeah. how this door came to be. OK, uh, <laughs> it was it it made me laugh so hard. And at one point, the main character calls him a good little door because he has the praise kink. <laughs> and I just <laughs> see, see. <laughs> That's oh the moment. That's... <laughs> a good little door. You're a good little door. Uh, well, so he comes to her in a dream. And he basically is like, hey, you are, I don't remember exactly what he says, but he basically he's like, I am your door. Okay. He's like a hot as fuck human, obviously, because this is monster romance world. I guess this isn't a monster, but. That's its own category. I don't even know what to categorize this one as. But um, he's like, but the only way for me to turn human is you have to fuck the door. Okay? Because the door is him. <laughs> and so then there's this scene. And I was sitting there. And I had, like, my hands on my face. And I'm just, like, reading it, like, Kevin McAllister style. Like, no. She's not. <laughs> she's not. And then he turns into a human and he's just like this delightful, cute character and who apparently has a praise kink and she's more dominant and that just like works for them. But like it actually has a pretty good – like if you get past the sentient door thing, it's a really cute story and there's like – there's some twists along the way and I I loved it. (laughs) You know? It's a break from everyday reality, like especially when like when things kind of suck and there is like, like, look at the look at the world. Look at the world. OK, this is why yeah. we have monster smut and why collectively all of us are like, I'm going to nope. I'm going to nope right <laughs> on out of this and I'll just I'll just go read a terrible smut book. So, yeah. So everybody listening, this is your fault. All of you collectively, See? this is your fault. It's not it's not our fault for being weirdos. It's y'all's fault for destroying the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I have two comparisons that I can sort of wrap my head around as far as this goes. Uh-huh. It's like a really intentionally bad movie. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think like the movie that pops into my mind when you talked about the door was I think the movie is called Rubber. And it's a sentient tire. <laughs> But it's a a murder movie. Like, it's trying to kill people by running them over. But it's just a tire. I I haven't ever heard of that. I love that. I'm going to watch it now. But yeah, it is. It's like the Sharknado of, or the, or the, what is that one? Lake Placid with the piranhas where it's like, no, that's not Lake Placid. That that has the alligator. Lake Placid has the giant alligator. Yeah. That has the giant alligator. But it's like, it's like that type of movie where you or Velasa Preacher, you know, you know, yeah. you know, going in, it's going to be bad and you're watching it for that exact reason. It's that, but make it smut. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a movie called Grabbers? I haven't. It's from the UK and the plot, I think it's set in Ireland. I could be wrong. And it's going to be as stereotypically bad as you would expect, but like Aliens Land. And they're drinking human blood and killing people. 
but they're allergic to alcohol. <laughs> so if your blood alcohol content is high enough, you can kill the aliens. So basically, the solution is to be drunk all of the time. This is how you avoid getting killed by aliens, being drunk. It's going to save your life. there's the movie. You know what? It is it is like that. It's exactly like that. And I think that that's what makes it so fun because I actually really love watching movies like that too. Like, there, it's just – it's fun to immerse yourself into this ridiculous fantasy world for a little while. And most of these books are like about the same length of Seduced by the Swamp Creature. It's like 60 to 80 pages. It doesn't take very long to read. You can literally – be having a shitty day at work and pull up one of these books and just enjoy yourself, you know, like that, not in like a, not in a smutty way, but you know, it's just, <laughs> well, no. I, I mean, you can, you can do that later. The that options tale, are, though. Uh, that, that tale though, the <laughs> options are endless and that's, yeah, but that's, that's the perfect comparison, like watching a bad movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're like, Hey, I know this is going to be bad going into it. And then you're pleasantly surprised. Yes, like the door one, the door one. I read that thinking I was going to hate it because why a door? I read that one out of morbid curiosity where I was like, I don't, I don't, we've gone too far in smut world. We've gone too far. And now I'm also out here being like, no, I love that book though. I love it. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's fun. There's, um, you know, there's, there's different tropes that people will play into based on, what kind of romance books that you like, but there's just something so enjoyable about reading these books. Like off air, you and I were discussing the the garden gnome one, which is, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. So there is this account, um, Unfortunate Reads, I'm pretty sure is her handle. And yeah, I've seen a lot of these accounts that read and review bad smut like this, but I love her page so much. She reviewed um, seduced by the swamp creature and I was living for it the entire time but she talked about this garden gnome one and you've seen the same video where it's basically this woman and she falls asleep outside while she's like reading a book or something and when she wakes up these three garden gnomes are like awake and they're talking to her and you know they're they're attempting to get a little freaky and she's like I don't know if I could do that and then she was like well this is a dream so might as well okay she had a <laughs> well technically that's a foursome with garden gnomes okay i haven't read this one yet full disclosure i haven't read this one yet but i am invested i'm gonna get around to it i just have to have to clear off some of my i have to clear off some of my writing stuff so i have time to read <laughs> i thought you were gonna say you had to clear off your browser history but... i have to clear my browser history <laughs> nobody look i'm gonna put that in my will i would like to i would like for this audio clip to be inserted into my will if and when i make one that says um please don't read my kindle thank you <laughs> <laughs> do whatever you want but don't look at the kindle <laughs> So even though I haven't read this story myself, I can tell you from the review that, yes, if you're curious, they do use their hats. Yep. Yep. All sorts of things happen with those garden gnomes. Okay. I saw another one that was, it, this was the same account, Unfortunate Reads, and it was called like Bagged by the Grocery Man or something like that. And it's this creature that comes to life, but it's made of like old produce or maybe it's fresh produce. I don't know. Either way, his entire body is made up of like lettuce and they described what his lips are made out of and I don't remember what it was, but I remember viscerally hating it. I'm 100% going to read it. Like I, <laughs> I I am so excited to read this book. I need all of these to be on audiobook so that I can listen while I'm doing like stuff around the house or driving because oh, what a thrill. Okay. But the worst part in that book was that that again, I haven't read, but this clip was read on this video, was that her dress clung to her skin like wet toilet paper and just, ugh. Can't, ugh, ugh. Uh, uh, you know, like what, it, uh, was there no, uh, like I, I get it because when toilet paper gets wet, it's like really clingy, but also, also, why there's, wet there's toilet so paper? There's so many other comparisons you could there's make. so many other ones, but it's that line, like the... The general disgust that I have for the way that this like vegetable man, well, not produce man is brought to life because vegetable man is a cryptid, obviously. However, the description of how he like 
is come to life and like the whole plot line paired with these clips of just being like, what the fuck? That's what makes me want to read it. That's what I am here for. (laughs) See, now I've got this whole thought in my head of this lady having PTSD from this encounter. And like every time she eats a salad now, she has flashbacks. (laughs) I'm pretty sure that she thoroughly enjoyed herself in this situation because in the book, in the book, Uh, She is trying to get pregnant with her husband, and she's been unable to do so. And this vegetable man comes to life and is like, I'm going to plant my seed inside you. Wow. I don't know if she ends up (laughs) pregnant by the end of it. I am. Can I just say for the record, I am not a fan of the pregnancy trope. Just like I don't like that's a thing in romance books where like you like are trapped together with a baby or like someone really wants to get pregnant. And that's like Mm -hmm. I have three entire children. Okay. There's nothing sexy about that. Like, no, thank you. No, thank you. But a lot of people love it. So my ick could be your yum. And you should go with that. You know, go. You should go for it. You do you in monster world. (laughs) You can have wet toilet paper dresses and it's fine. (laughs) There's a place for everybody. There's a place for everybody. There's a place for everyone. There's a kink for everyone. So I'm pretty sure that that lady will never think of her salad again the same way, but for different reasons. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. My mind just went to a bad place with salad dressing. That's what's fun about it. I made, I had a whole discussion about Gil's cum. (laughs) That's like, yes, there you go into great detail on the book. Yeah, I made it blue and shimmery. Okay. And that's because I read a few others where they, I don't think that their cum was colored, but like there was something about it. But I was like, you know what? I'm not really like a, a lot of these monster romances will like take liberties with the anatomy and they'll like add things or like, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, whatever, like the dick spines earlier. Um, And who am I to say? I was like, I don't really, you know, I haven't thought enough about this to really give the anatomy a twist like that. Other than I did have a conversation that was like, is it, does he have like a kangaroo pouch, you know, where his bits go (laughs) or is it just out all the time? But I decided it would be funnier if it was out all the time. So that's what I did. Um, But yeah, I was like scales and covered in scales. And covered in scales. And then when that scene came, I was like, I feel like, I feel like I should just add some detail to make this like, eh, you know, oh, that's a little, (laughs) I don't know how I feel about that, but okay. And so I was like, I texted a few different people and I was like, should I make his cum colored? Right. And the immediate response is, oh, because it should, you know what, it should, if you have colors, then you have, should go to a doctor because that's a problem. But again, this is monster world. So I was thinking about it and I was like, well, Gil's green, but I don't think I could get past the color green it just in mm. cum form. Like that's, that's a disease. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing hot about it. I was like, what if I made it blue and shimmery like a pearl? <laughs> <laughs> And then I did that and I had the most fun. I had the most fun brainstorming these like random bits that I like stuck in, but random uh, bits. Yeah. <laughs> see what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it it's that it's it's that type of thing where it's just like it it's fun and it's meant to be fun. Like it's enjoyable to read. Like if the book is terrible or not, I have a great time. <laughs> I I love I love reading these stories. Um but yeah, I, I did have I did have a lot of fun with Gil, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have fun writing his pants scene now too. <laughs> yeah, it's I feel like we were talking about something else, and I've just like I forgot. So <laughs> I have no idea, but honestly, okay, cool. you stumbled onto something that makes a lot of sense. See, you have fun writing this. I have. It's so hilarious, much fun. and you entertain yourself. Yes, exactly. And it just so happens that a bunch of other people really enjoy other it. Other people really enjoy it. Uh, and that makes me happy too, because like, you know, like if you, if you, well, I, I'll, st- I'll take the stage as Carly once again. My life <laughs> is a mess. My life is, it's, it's hard. It has been hard for 
quite a while. I don't see any end line for the hard part of my life. Like things are getting better and I am getting better, but it 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 is still like it's it's still my reality. So having these escapes into these fantastical worlds that are so ridiculous that they make you laugh and then writing my own, mm-hmm. it has just been yeah, it's been great and one of the things that I enjoy so much about writing as Ivana and making TikToks as Ivana is that I I have PTSD. I like I talk about that all the time. I I have PTSD, so this was my only thing that I have created that is untouched by my PTSD. So to me, it really is like this escape from my life <laughs> into into another life and I there are a lot of beautiful, really amazing parts of my life, so I don't want it to sound like everything is terrible all the time. But when things are hard, having something like this to be like, you know what, would turn this day around is some terrible monster smut. Is <laughs> it's just it's it's a relief and I feel like I used to have a lot more fun and I used to goof off a lot online in my daily life and it's been hard for me to do that mostly since I moved back to my parents' house. But, you know, it, it's been hard to access that kind of like play, you know, it's, it's, it's nonsense. It's, it's fun. It's, it makes me laugh and it's been hard to do those things living here. So I just did it in book form, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like if I hadn't have moved here, like if things hadn't been bad enough that I needed to move here, would I have written this? Probably not. So like, you know, we could go back and be like, there's a reason for everything. And that's when yeah. I go, eh, I hate that because I would never choose this for myself. But the reality is that I was, I I wasn't forced into the situation. I chose the situation, but I chose it out of a feeling of, I don't really have any other options right now. Like this is the best option of a series of bad options. And because I did that, it did open up a whole new world of possibilities for me. So like I probably wouldn't have written any of my other books if I hadn't been here either. But that is that is the core aspect of the monster smut. Is it, it is it's fun and it is hilarious to read and to talk about. I'm in like smut chat groups now. I got added to one. I don't even know how I got in there. I just opened my Instagram and I was like, whoa. <laughs> There's a group chat in my inbox, but Everybody in this community is just as delightfully entertained by this as, you know, as I am. <laughs> it's just like, this This is fantastic. And we can all come together and talk about how weird and delightful it is. Like, <laughs> there's people all over the internet had the exact same reaction to that door book that I did that, like, we picked it up specifically knowing what we were in for. It's an, it's a, it's a, door it's a door she's gonna fuck the door let's read it and we all walked away like that was fantastic though it was so good (laughs) (laughs) well i feel like that's a good place to end the show before we get off here is there uh, uh, sorry phrasing before we (laughs) end the show is there anything you would like to plug beyond what you've already talked about on the show nope that's it for me yeah, you can follow me at Carly.Latham on Instagram. My subtitle is still The Village Tarot Witch, but if you are searching for me, it is Carly.Latham. And if you want to keep up with Ivana, uh, the best place to do that is TikTok, um, Ivana.Author on TikTok. And then, of course, please subscribe to the Dark Village Substack so that you can get in on all of this Gil Christmas fun. <laughs> And of course, as always, I'll post links to all of these in the show notes. So thank you once again so much for finally uh, popping my paranormal romance cherry. (laughs) I guess. (laughs) An honor. Yes. (laughs) And I will definitely have you back on the show sometime soon. I would love that. Thank you for having me. And until next time, for everyone out there listening, remember, stay weird.
Okay, since we have a break in the conversation, I'm going to pause so I can fix my chair. Okay. The, uh, there we go. The rocker part came undone. So every time it rocks, it would squeak. So now I think I have it fixed. Okay, that's Perfect. better. Hey, everyone. Natalie here from the Pendulum's Path. If you need guidance, direction, spiritual connection, or more, then listen up. I have worked as a psychic and a medium for over three years, connecting people from all over the world with their loved ones in spirit, giving them insight and guidance into their current situations, the past healings that need to be worked on, and what it is they need to know today in order to have a better future. It would be my absolute honor if you would visit my website at www.thependulumspath.com. I also offer emailed readings for those with busy schedules too. Also, for you goblins who subscribe to the Esoteric Book Club, I have a special coupon code just for you. Enter the code STAYWEIRD to get $5 off of any order of $25 or more. Hope to see you there.